Welcome to our Bible time this week, boys and girls. Today we want to talk about the Tenth Commandment. Does anybody know what the Tenth Commandment says? That's right. You shall not covet. Do you know what it means to not covet something? Well, let me show you a picture, see if you can figure it out. What's going on here? What, what is that boy wishing as he looks at the girl's huge ice cream sundae in a cone? He's wishing, boy, I wish I didn't have this lollipop. I wish I had her nice ice cream cone. But coveting isn't just done by boys and girls. It's also done by moms and dads. See, dad here has a bicycle. He's looking at this other guy. He has a really nice motorcycle. And he's thinking in his heart, boy, I wish I had a motorcycle like that guy. He didn't have to ride this old bike. So coveting boys and girls is not being satisfied with what God has provided for us and wishing and constantly thinking about having what others have. Maybe it's something our neighbor has that you see him ride by on that fancy new bike or something else that he's gotten. And uh, wanting those things and not being content with what God's given us is the sin of covetousness. The Bible tells us of a man who was covetous and it cost him his life. You know who that is? It's found in the book of Joshua in chapter seven. Remember the children of Israel were um, coming into the promised land and God said, go and take control of the city of Jericho and destroy it. And they walked around it for seven days, remember? They didn't say a word and the people were on the wall looking down at them, perhaps laughing, making, what, what are these guys doing? Walking around our city and remember they were, blowing trumpets and but they didn't say a word because god said he was going to give them the city and they were to conquer it but there was a very important command that god gave god said this city jericho belongs to me everything in it the gold the silver the bronze bring all of the bronze and silver and gold into the temple that belongs to me they were going to conquer many cities in the land of Israel. But this first city belonged to God. It was, it was the first city that they would conquer. And God wanted them to dedicate the gold and the silver and every, the things, the uh, bronze in it to him. But everything else they were to destroy. Nothing was to be left. The city was to be completely burned. And remember, they circled the city the seventh day, blew their trumpets, and the walls came tumbling down, except for where Rahab the har harlot was. Remember, she had brought all her family into her home, and God spared her because she trusted God that he was the one true God, and so she was not punished with the rest of the city when they took it but when they blew the trumpets the walls came down and they rushed into the city and they were uh, destroying the city and everything in it and burning it and a man named Achan was doing battle and he was going through the different uh, homes in the in the city there and 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 slashing with his sword and fighting off the enemy uh, those who lived in Jericho and while he was in the one home, he looked down. Ah, oh, there was a beautiful garment. Oh, it was so gorgeous. And he looked around. Nobody was looking. So he grabbed the garment, 
stuffed it into his, uh, underneath his cloak. And he was fighting some more with his sword and moving through the sound. And oh, you know, one time he looked down and there in the house was a golden wedge and some silver. And he looked around and said, ah, God isn't going to miss. Nobody's going to care if I take a little bit for myself. And so he took the gold and the silver and stuck, took them into his uh, cloak. And they burnt the city and destroyed it and, and uh, conquered the city. And then Achan, uh, with, the, uh, with, with knowing what uh, he had done, was wrong, hid, dug a hole in his tent and hid the garment and the gold wedge and the silver in the middle of his tent. And uh, his family, knowing about it, certainly helped him. And they knew what he had done as well. Um, and so they covered it up and no one seemed to know until Israel went to battle against the next town, Ai. And remember what happened? They just sent a small force and said, oh, we don't need to all go and fight this village. But when they went to conquer Ai, the people from Ai came out and made them retreat. And they, and they uh, were not able to conquer the city of Ai. And they were defeated before their enemies. And some of the Israelite soldiers were killed in that battle. And Joshua and the people of Israel fell down before God and to, cried out to God and said, why have you let us be defeated before our enemies? And God said, get up, Joshua. Uh, someone has sinned and taken uh, what was devoted to me. And so, Joshua called all the tribes together and he, and he narrowed it down to the tribe of Judah and then down to the family of Achan. And then he confronted Achan and said, Achan, what did you do? Why have you troubled Israel? And Achan said, when I saw among the spoils, the things that were, they were, uh, destroying in the city. I saw a beautiful Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold, weighing 50 shekels, and I coveted them. I desired them, and I wanted them for myself, and I took them, and I buried them in my tent. So this is what Achan did. He saw, and then he kept the desiring them and saw, wow, these would really be nice to have. And surely God won't mind if I take a little bit. And so he took them and then he uh, put them into his tent and tried to hide it. But as a result, uh, Israel was defeated before their enemies and had to um, retreat and suffer defeat. And so Joshua and all the people of Israel then had to punish Achan and his family, everyone who was involved in this sin of coveting. What an awful price he had to pay for coveting. Now, boys and girls, um, God sees our hearts and he knows uh, when we are not satisfied with the things that uh, he has given us. He says, be content with what you have. Now, we're not living in the Old Testament times and, and um, certainly I haven't, uh, I haven't been uh, stoned to death or um, the earth hasn't opened up. Uh, because of the things that I've coveted, but God still hates the sin of covetousness. And he will, if you are his child, he promises that he loves us and he disciplines his children. And God doesn't want us to be discontented people. 
He wants to be satisfied satisfied with what he gives us. And when we constantly want what others have and aren't satisfied, that's the sin of covetousness. And we need to confess that to God and ask him to help us to be happy with what he's given us and seek to use the things that he has uh, for his kingdom and his glory. And then as we are faithful, the Bible promises that as we are faithful with what he gives us, then he will trust us with other things as well. But we need to be content. And I trust that you will uh, be content uh, with the things that you have. Be thankful for what God has given you. And stop looking around at what everybody else has. And think of ways that you can use the things God has given you to um, help benefit others and to use for the glory of God. So if you'd like to read more about this, it's in the book of Joshua in chapter 7. And uh, all the things that God did and how they had victory after they had uh, taken care of the sin of covetousness. God gave them the victory over the cities there in Israel. God can give you the victory too, boys and girls. And I trust that you will pray and ask him to help you this week. Thank you. Have a blessed week.